from all, to all, with all, for all, through all. We thank the gods of creation. We thank the ancestors. We thank the forces of nature. And we thank the earth. We thank them for their direction, their protection, their guidance, for keeping us, showing us, allowing us to know and enjoy life to its fullest, now and later. Black people that must love with the slow amounts of time. Time was ours to hold in the soft, low, warm chambers of our hearts. And was we, the half-fooled mommies and daddies of a sun world, would turn our strands of hair and two antennas to tune in the juju madness and syncopated love rhythms of Africa. And we loved with time, and we took the time to love, and with the right time we loved, and we loved time after time. Will we ever love again will we ever love again will we really ever love again or will we just sit and rot away with the brighter tomorrows in the skag field rat cluttered the, 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 the stars of our minds black people what y'all gonna do black people what y'all gonna do will the real black people please stand up Oh, 
starts a new day. Uh, Let us good. march on. Uh, yeah. Till yeah. victory. Good evening, our story viewing family. Um, once again, uh, we're coming to you. Uh, I appreciate those of you all who are getting an opportunity to look at us right now on your television, but also I'd like to not only welcome, but also say thanks to those of you all who have been checking us out on the W.C. Johnson YouTube channel, our story, and also checking us out uh, on Vimeo, and those of you who also have been listening to us on the internet radio. Once again, this is Brother Johnny sitting in for your host, W.C. Johnson. And again, I'd like to once again thank you for being able to come with us this evening and share some time with us. Uh, I'm once again, I'm very honored to have this brother with us today, Brother Bilal Sunny Ali. Last mm -hmm. time you was here with us for Black August. Yes, sir. And this time you're here with us, you're in town because of Jazz Fest, correct? Yeah, I come in town for, I come in town for the, for specifically for the Jazz Fest. That's, okay, that's, okay. That's the, that's the business that brings me in town. Okay, well, uh -huh. I know those who, who are, are you know, very, our audience or members mm -hmm. may already be familiar with you, but yeah. once again, those of you all who are not familiar with this brother, this brother's a musician, artist, mm -hmm. activist, uh, you know, just look the brother up. You all should be very aware of this brother because he has been doing not only things in our community, not only things nationally, but also internationally as well. Okay, thank you. Um, first, I'd like to say I seek refuge in the law against misleading and being misled against oppression and, and being oppressed by others. I ask the law to guide my heart and to guide my tongue as to everything I, I may say and everything I may do. And I want to uh, share some information. Like I say, the business that brings me in town is the Jazz Fest. Mm -hmm. um, but, the, um, but the business of Jazz Fest has always been to me the business of, of has been the business of struggling for our liberation. When I first got involved with the Jazz Fest, it was a, there was a, uh, a boycott going on by the, uh, being led by the uh, Jazz, African American Jazz Fest Coalition against the Jazz Fest um, on the basis that the Jazz Fest uses our culture and exploits our culture and doesn't give us a, a doesn't give the community, the residents of New Orleans whose culture this is being Who's, who's as being ex exploited, it doesn't give us uh, it doesn't give us a fair equity in in being able to exploit our own culture and they and they being able to receive the benefits of our own culture being expressed and being shared with so many millions of people at this particular time and that has that through that boycott and through that protest that has led to many things. One of the things is that. Uh, I'm a pioneer in the Jazz Fest in the Congo Square Marketplace. Um, Congo Square Marketplace has been going on. It started off as Coin Do, which, which, which was uh, what, what we had called it back then, the Coin Do Marketplace. It's, it's close to 40 years old now, if not more than 40. I remember when we had celebrated our 35th anniversary. But that's been an ongoing work in an ongoing development of community self-determination to uh, expand the Jazz Fest and expand, expand the marketplace and expand those who are part of the marketplace, those of us who are pioneers who helped kick it off to, uh, to be involved in other marketplaces um, around, in other communities around the country and around the world. You know, we've, we've been 
efforts in, in Ghana, West Africa, mm -hmm. and as well as in, in uh, Johannesburg, South Africa. Mm -hmm. That all started from our work right here in New Orleans, mm -hmm. uh, uh, protesting against the Jazz Fest, but not as much as protesting, but insisting on inclusion. Yeah, that's, that, the, the main thing was not to protest, not to bring the Jazz Fest down, but to open it up so that it make sure it would include us and, and include and include the valuable contributions of the community and not just look at it as just as just something they can throw where people are coming and they sing and they dance, you know, but people appreciate it. And I, and I now see, you know, there's lots of books out. There's books out about the Fai Yai Yai. There's books out about different uh, social and pleasure clubs that's been the culture of New Orleans. And, that, and that's a, you know, it's a, that's a continuation of the work of, um, of what they, termed as a protest, but it was, it, was, it was a fight for inclusion, and that fight for inclusion is still going on. Yeah. Well, how is, if I could just ask you this question, uh, you know, you, you speak of your involvement in Jazz Fest. Mm -hmm. Not only have you been involved as a musician, but also you talk about how you've been involved as, you know, as far as from an activist standpoint, right. in terms of trying to bring about some changes and exactly. get certain things accomplished and done, right? how is things different with this Jazz Fest compared to maybe your personal experience with other Jazz Fests or other similar um, music festivals? Well, I think that what the thing about New Orleans is that New Orleans, the community engages the corporate structure more so than any other, mm. any other festival uh, around the country that I've participated in. Um, the community and, and 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 through the community engaging it and challenging it, challenging it, challenging the corporate structures which 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 run the jazz festival, um, they it make it makes them pay attention. Mm -hmm. uh, once they're challenged, they pay attention, and when they pay, and when they pay attention, the more we push, the more we get. I don't say we get everything we ask for, but the more the community pushes the more we get. And the more the community organizes, the more the community is able to, is able to maintain the gains we've made. And so we're, we're struggling hard to push forward uh, to the point where we can uh, establish our own festival. And that's one of the things that we're, we're strongly looking at. The, the pioneers, uh, we meet after the Jazz Fest is over, we meet every Monday, usually at our Sheikh uh, Cultural Center. We usually meet and have a business meeting and, and just a social gathering of all of us just being together for so long. And we meet and discuss some of our things, some of our ways in which we intend to challenge the structure, as well as ways where we can ourselves do things for ourselves and, and expand, <clears throat> expand, our, our, expand our, our ability to affect the community by, uh, and one of those things that we're planning to do, we've been working at it for quite a while, is to uh, establish our own venue. Mm -hmm. uh, it won't be the Jazz Fest, but it'll be, it'll be maybe a series of concerts that'll mm -hmm. be brought to you by the, by the pioneers of the marketplace. Right, yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, now, you bring it up something as far as can you let our audience know what you know? If you can just define or give them some more insight into who are the pioneers, or what do you mean by when you say the pioneers? Okay, when I say the pioneers of jazz fest, when the um, when the jazz fest started, um, when it was back, it'll be fifty years next year. It was nineteen sixty nine. Um, after after a while, it was it, they started adding on the. Um, the marketplaces and the Af when the African marketplace was started, there wasn't um, there wasn't an African marketplace. There was there was just there was Africans involved in the in the marketplace. There were jewelers such as uh, Brother Osejifo, who's who's one of the uh, presidents of the uh, of the Coin Do of of Coin Do Association, and also um, um, another jeweler. Uh, by the name of Adam Ecclesiastes, who's mm. uh, who has been involved in the, and they were involved not only as jewelers but also in organizing people, letting people know about the Jazz Fest, letting other people 
letting other merchants and uh, around the world, around the world, particularly around the country, know about the know about the jazz fest, know about the the greatness of it and the struggle that that's going on with it, and and asking people to come and join that struggle, and because of because of our initial stance, we have been granted uh, we have been granted like it grew to be two weekends. Um, it w it was originally. Um, one weekend was three days, the first weekend was three days, and the second weekend was two days. Now it's grown to the first weekend is three days, and the second weekend, second, second week instead of being two days, it's now four days. It mm -hmm. goes from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on the second weekend. That'll be next weekend. This weekend, it'll just be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we were able to get a lot more people involved in it, and because of our active stance in in making the in making it grow, and and in Coindu and Congo Square becoming the, one of the features of the Jazz Fest, we 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 felt that we we deserved we deserved a status within the whole structure. So one of the concessions that they've made is that they've allowed us they've allowed us to work both weekends. Uh, uh, pioneers, that is, people who were involved in from the beginning, uh, are allowed to allowed to work both weekends, whereas the average person that applies for the, to, to applies to Van that Jazz Fest, they will one give weekend. one weekend or the other. Uh, I'd like to get, a, is, our, is our number up there? If we have any callers, do we have a call on the line? Yes, mm -hmm. hello. All right, hello. How, how are you doing tonight, caller? Do you have a question or comment? Yes, God bless you. Just tuned in. Um, God bless both of you. Um, is, is there anywhere we can find information about the pioneers of the Jazz Fest? Uh, any books or anything we can read up online? Or um, you could uh, you could look up Coindu K O N D U. Um, K O N D U. Okay. You can you can Google Coindu, and uh -huh. that should give you um, that should give you a, quite a bit of information. About um, about the jazz fest. If you're coming out to the jazz festival, uh, you could come to booth U2 in the African Marketplace. That's the uh -huh. maker. That's my personal booth. And you could also look up um, Brother Adam. Um, I don't remember his booth number, but he's just a few. He's on what's called Congo Road, just a few booths uh -huh. away from me, uh -huh. and. Brother, uh, one of the other leaders in the amongst the pioneers is Brother Sarge, and uh -huh. and his booth is uh, again not far from mine. So if you come out to the Jazz Fest, we'll have um, you can speak directly to us, and we can direct you to other members and other people who've been active for years, and and those who are still in leadership of it, as well as you would be invited to come to our, our meeting, um, which takes place. Um, at, at the Ashe Cultural Center on mm -hmm. Monday, uh, Monday the seventh, uh, the jazz mm -hmm. festival is over on the sixth, and the following day, before everybody leaves town, we meet, and you'd be welcome to uh, come to our meeting to uh, discuss with us anything you'd like to do or anything more you'd like to hear about. But that's the way you can directly be in touch, in touch with the uh, with the pioneers of the African marketplace. Right, because I remember seeing you on West Show before. You're definitely a jazz musician, and uh, I saw a Jazz Fest commercial just the other day, and I couldn't find. Could you speak up a little, a little louder? Okay, I said you're just definitely a jazz musician from seeing you on West Show a couple of years ago, uh -huh. and um, you know I was looking at a Jazz Fest commercial just the other day, and I could. I couldn't really find one jazz musician. They had country and western artists and who knows who else on the Jazz Fest commercial. So I wish you all would strike out and venture on your own because you're talking about cultural appropriation of the term jazz. You know, <laughs> like that that whole thing yeah, has well, been culturally appropriated and they just do whatever they want to with the term jazz. There's hardly any jazz there. You know? Yeah, actually they can do whatever they want to uh, because they've They've invented they've invented the term jazz to apply it to our culture. Uh, that was not something that we did as a we people. came up with. Um, and the way they invented it, jazz jazz 
was the word, a jazz house was a whore house. Mm -hmm. So an African could play in a whore house where you wouldn't be allowed to play in many other places. Right. And like uh, Amiri Baraka says in, his, in, in, uh, in one of his articles, you either, had to tray in your, you either had to have a tray in your hand or have a horn in your hand <laughs> in order for you to beat in there. So <clears throat> it, wasn't, it wasn't the name of a place that we, it's not like we played church music, we went to church, we knew what that was all about. But the same music that we played in church, we would play if we were allowed to play just for more mobility and more financial mobility and income, we would play mm -hmm. in jazz houses too. <coughs> so that's how, we, that's how we allowed the music to become pimped by allowing it to play in the jazz house and let the pimps who run the jazz house call our music jazz and then they pimp it any way they want to. They can call our music jazz, they can call anybody's music jazz. And then they can say, you know, but we hold on to the fact that our music is our, is our culture and we, and, we, and we realize the fact that our music, the same music that we play in, in church uh, is the same music that we express ourselves in. Um, as many people know that I used to play with Gil Scott Heron and he has a, uh -huh. he has a song called Is That Jazz? You know, one mm -hmm. of the things that he says in it is that we overanalyze and let others define a thousand precious moments of our past. When we express love and tenderness, is that jazz, is that jazz, is that jazz? And so it's not, as a matter of fact, it's not the word, it's not the word jazz that we're concerned with. We're concerned with the, 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 um, the, the honesty the energy. of our of expression. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what we use that music for, it's, it's, it's used for healing, and it's used for a lot more than just feeding the people, um, giving the people a, a front while they, while they do take care of their illicit business at this, <laughs> at this illicit place called the Jazz Club. Our music, is, our music is greater than that. And we want to, and that's one of the reasons why we want to establish our own venue for expressing right. the music because that'll keep it ours, that'll keep it in our culture. And then we, you know, as years go by, we can define as we want to because as terms come up and go, terms come and go, and we have a lot of terms that we're not, that, that we're not satisfied with in defining us, you know, such as, you know, I don't even know if I should say the word because it, it, you catch so much flack for saying it. But even mm -hmm. like even like the word picnic, you know, right. picnic, right. You know, which was used to describe how they would how they would catch us and brutalize us. Now it's an acceptable term, you know. It's an acceptable term. People have even churches have picnics. Mars have picnics, and and it's and it's and instead of being a curse to us, it's a, it's acceptable. Oh, there, let's have a picnic, you know. And and it's so we um so that's one of the things that we're we're working on. In the, at the Jazz Fest, um, I, I'm trying to remember where it is, but we did, when we were at the 35th anniversary, there was a, um, we did, there was a photo collection as well as an exhibit. And you can go to the spot on Ramparts and uh, get directed to where that gallery is, where, that, where you can look, look up the exhibit of, on Coindu, uh, Coindu Congo Square. And, and see the contributions that the uh, that the artists, both on stage and visual artists, have made uh, toward the, toward this festival being a, a a rallying point of a rallying point of culture and a rallying point around struggling around the ideas of, of that our culture presents to us. Very good. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you for your question. Right now. And thank you, Cole. And in regard to uh, struggling, I um, many of you may may know that I um, that I represent Imam Jamil Abdullah Alamin, formerly known as H. Rap Brown. And I represent a lot of political prisoners, but I represent him because um, I've been friends with him for um, you know for going on fifty years or going on over fifty years, and. And I, I live and work in primarily in Atlanta, uh, in the community that he started. And and for those of you who may not be familiar with it, and we constantly bring it up because news comes and goes. News gets news comes to us, and we hear it, and we say, "Oh wow, 
that's that's something important. And then it it dies away from the news. And so we are about the business of being out front, about keeping his name out there and keeping the names of other political prisoners alive. One of the things that they have going on against Imam Jamil, the former H. Rap Brown, right now is a gag order, mm -hmm. just as they had years ago, not allowing him to speak. Uh, they're not allowing him to do interviews. Uh, people from all over the world want to know about his life. It's to the point where they don't even allow, if a person is connected with the media, they don't even allow them to personally visit him because they say, well, he might, he might just be talking to him as a friend, but he might come out and write an article about it or, or do a television show about it. <laughs> so whatever they do to clamp down on political prisoners, we try to open it up. One of the things that we, we have established right, right now is, a, is an open letter to the Bureau of Prisons. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll pull it up so we can, uh, I can give out the actual... Um, the actual letter where people can write to and yeah, yeah because I don't know you know how how many uh, our viewers are familiar exactly with what's been going on regarding Imam Jamil's situation also with his health okay yeah that's, that's that, very that's important as thing. well we want to in general we want to send people to the to our website yeah. which is Imam Jamil Action Network that's I M A M J M I L A C T I O N N E T W O R K at actionwork.net. Imam Jamil Action Network dot, <clears throat> dot net. And there you can get the updates, um, updates on his health. His general condition of his health is that he suffers from a condition known as uh, my, mm, I better not say it, because I don't want to mispronounce it and mislead someone. So what it is, it's a precursor to blood cancer. Uh -huh. um, sometimes it flares up, but lately over the last few years, it's been under control. That means it hasn't been giving him any trouble, it hasn't been giving him any of his organs any any um, any problems, and they say if it gives them any problems, they would they you know they would pay they would pay attention to it. Um, so right now that condition is is somewhat under arrest. And according to his last visits, uh, his wife has been to see him. I spoke with his son has been to see him, and also his his lawyer, attorney Musa Donfodio has been to see him and they say that he's in great spirits. Um, they say that he's been, he's in greater spirits than they've ever visited him in um, for these past 18 years that he's been in prison. And that's one of the shames of it. It's been 18 years that, that this, that this uh, shooting place in the West End mm -hmm. took place and 16, six, two years after that there was a trial of a very, um, a very bogus trial in which uh, there were so many things that were unconstitutional, uh, so many violations. It was over over 108 violations of his constitutional rights cited, but they have not yet seen to uh, fit to give him a new trial. So we're trying to keep these things in the front as well as uh, we want to. Um, we have at the website you can get where you can get to. Um, you can get to tell people, you can get to see there's what's called an open letter to the prisoners, an open letter about the gag order, and you can sign on to this open letter. Um, let me just pull up the, the website to go to so you can sign on to the open letter. Yeah, because our, our viewers should have an understanding. I know I can speak from my personal experience being a former resident of the West End. Mm -hmm. uh, when Imam Jamil was, and everything was up and running as far as with the mosque and everything, you could walk through the West End. I could walk through the West End any time of day, any time of night. Now there were no problems. There was no problems in West End Park. Now immediately after that situation took place, the West End went down. You mm -hmm. could see a correlation between when Imam Jamil 
and the mosque was, and everything was up, and then immediately upon the situation of what happened with him being detained and imprisoned, all of a sudden things in West End went down. Mm -hmm. yeah, but uh, go, go ahead, yeah. do you have the information? So, yeah, this, um, this is a website you can go to, you can get a copy of the open letter there's an open letter to the Bureau of Prisons, um, and you, people can sign on to that open letter. And I can see you can get it from that at the website, but you can go directly to this website. It's www.kundnani, that's K-U-N-D-N-A-N-I dot O-R-G slash Jamil Alameen. Again, that's um, www. See, they're trying to get a shot of it. I don't know if we can, if we can get that, but it's www again. www.kundnani.org slash j a m i l a l a m i n. And when you go to that website, you can, um, you can, you'll see the letter and you'll be able to sign on, as well as you'll be able to send a letter to other people to, to let them know about the existence of this, of this effort and, that, and, and so you can, become, you can become a part of, it, of signing it as well as you can become a part of spreading the word. Um, another, thing, um, another thing that we're involved in, specifically around the gag order, is getting his work out. He has a book that's coming out as you know, his name rap came from the fact came from the fact that he he was the best rhymer rhymer and presenting things in clarity uh, long before this long before this venue of entertainment was named rap. He was doing that. As a matter of fact, we say that the that the 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 the, <clears throat> the name for this genre of entertainment came from him because he was the rapper. He was the one that was clear in his message, being able to be clear, and would always, and would always use verses and rhymes. He has a book of verses and rhymes that's ready to, to come out. And one of the things we've done, we have a book uh, as political prisoners and former political prisoners. We have, we have re-released a book, uh, a book called Look For Me In The Whirlwind. Uh, Look For Me In The Whirlwind is the Forty years ago, it was out as the autobiography of the uh, Panther 21. A lot of people know about the case of the New York Panther 21. But in this book, we now have uh, Imam Jamil has written a foreword to it. So even though they say he can't speak, he can't again. We have his he have his word out, and we'll have the book with his with his foreword to the book, and we we'll, we intend to have a. Uh, we intend to have a discussion and a book sale and a, and a book signing at the um, Community Book Center, mm -hmm. which, which I believe is 2324 Bayou Road. And next, next Wednesday, a week from today, uh, from 5 to 7. And so we're asking people to come out. We're asking people who were, who've been political prisoners, who are families of political prisoners, who've been Panthers and families of family members of Panthers, and we had, I mean, we know in New Orleans there's no, there's no shortage of political yeah, prisoners. Political there's prisoners. no shortage of people who have, who, have been, who have been struggling, struggling. New Orleans is one of the high marks of, the, of, the, of our struggle for liberation. And so we, um, matter of fact, some of the people, well, at the time of the, of the publishing of the first edition, um, the reason why some people are making their contribution at this time is because some people use New Orleans as a. Some people use New Orleans as an underground spot because, uh, because New Orleans was a, New Orleans was safe. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always been considered safe for African people who are struggling for their freedom to come to New Orleans, um, to come to New Orleans and just exist because uh, people respect Freedom Fridays. That's what we found in New Orleans. People expect freedom respect those freedom fighters and allow them to and they won't and they won't turn you in. 
Mm -hmm. That's what, that's what uh, that's, some people, they say different mm -hmm. things they like about New Orleans. Some people like, like, like the shrimp. Some people <laughs> right. like the gumbo. But that's what I like yeah. about New Orleans. The people, that, pe the people that the people in New Orleans love, love the history of their involvement in our liberation struggle. And that's what I like about New Orleans. Well, I don't know how many of our viewers are aware that H. Rap Brown, Imam Jamil, is actually, his people are yeah. from South Louisiana. Right. He's, he's yeah. He was born and raised in, in, he was born and raised in Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. So his people, you know, he's from New, he's practically from New Orleans because right. people around here, they know him. They know him from when he was growing up and they knew him later on in high school playing basketball. They knew mm -hmm. him, you know, they knew him throughout his life. Right. And, 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 and he always, uh, he always tells me when I come to New Orleans to definitely to say thank you to people. You know, mm -hmm. thank you to people for continuously staying in his corner and for continuing continuing to support him, um, to support him. He, you know, so I do want to make sure that people understand that uh, Imam Jamil, formerly known as H. Rap Brown, still known as H. Rap Brown to many of you, you know, sends his love and sends his uh, warm appreciation for the for the work that, that, that's been done in New Orleans, including the producers of this show, which always gives us an outlet to speak on the issues. Well, let me ask you this question then. Uh, you know, because you had mentioned dealing with the situation with the political prisoners, and you mentioned something very important about New Orleans in a way. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of political prisoners here. We know that Louisiana leads not the country, but the world. Right. As far as imprisonment, in particular, yeah. when we deal with imprisonment of, 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 of black men, and I understand black women is increasing, but still that mm -hmm. number is extremely small right. compared to the numbers with black yeah. men. Yeah. Uh, what is it that, in your opinion, as people use this term, not a private prison industrial complex, and what's mm -hmm. going on with what you all doing with political prisoners? prisoners I guess, what is the scope in terms of how far you're able to go with that? Because to me, even if you see a brother or sister getting arrested, some of these things that they in jail for, the majority of them, are in jail for nonviolent crimes. Right. And you understand see, what I'm saying? When we talk about political prisoners, we're talking about people who've been in jail in prison because of the work that they're doing, the work that they're doing would, would be for the betterment of the community, for the mm -hmm. benefit of, of our nation. They wanted to impede that work, and that's mm -hmm. why they put them in prison. Mm -hmm. uh, and the same thing with the average prisoner who's not considered a political prisoner. Um, the reason they're in jail is not because they they, they committed any crime. Mm -hmm. You know, it's because it's because they're black, mm -hmm. and because they know by putting more black people in jail, incarcerating more black people in jail, and forcing them to have to fight that fight to get out of jail. That's a that's a fight that takes us off the off the the focus of constantly progressing. So we are so we are all political prisoners mm -hmm. in a sense. We have a certain category of, that we call political prisoners because if they were already involved in political in political work, but some people get involved once they are incarcerated, uh, such as the. So this is the Angola Three. They joined the, the Black Panther Party in Angola after they were already after they were already imprisoned. They didn't go to jail uh, for so-called political reasons, but their reason for being in jail for so for so long, and uh, in matter of fact, for two of them for most for most all, of all most of their lives, except for uh, it came down to two or three days, mm -hmm. uh, I believe, for Brother uh, Albert Whitfox, and then. Um, I'm having a senior moment. The names are escaping me, but um, but but we what we have is that they spent most of their life in not only in prison but in solitary confinement uh, right here in 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 Louisiana, in Angola, Louisiana, in solitary confinement for uh, for over 40 years. Um, we have a lot of prisoners who've been locked down for over 40 years. And some of them 45 years, and it's yeah, just like I can't uh, recall the names of, of the brothers I'm trying to think of right now. There's so many names that I would like to call of political prisoners and prisoners of war uh, that's right here pertaining to our own struggle. 
and not even to mention the many political prisoners and prisoners of war around the world. Um, one of the things that we hope to, to have highlight on this is there's going to be, we're, we're working on a, a celebration of Mandela, who was a celebrated political prisoner, um, you know, over 10 years ago until he, until he was released. Uh, we, the, the spirit that engulfed the people that the people were engaged in um, toward the release of, 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 of Nelson Mandela as a political prisoner. And those other ANC political prisoners, again, a lot of times, you know, Walter Sisulu, just to name one. And there was many, many political prisoners in South Africa, not just Mandela, but there's always a few who we single out because you can't talk about everybody. It's like I, I can't just talk about Imam Jamil that right now. I can't just talk about Brother Robert King, who's who's right here out, one of the survivors of the Angola Three. And then, but there are other survivors of that Angola experience. Brother Chewy, who has a show on early in the day, he's a, a survivor of that Angola experience. And there's so many who struggled in the prison to be, come out and, and continue to struggle on the streets. Continue, they didn't let the fact that they were imprisoned stop them. So the whole idea, like the uh, counterintelligence program, the papers say that it was to neutralize the efforts of the revolutionary nationalist movement and those who, who spread that, rep, uh, uh, that spread that idea of the, of, uh, the ideology of revolutionary nationalism, black revolutionary nationalism, that, they, that their ideas would not succeed to the next generation. And so we, you know, we say we've succeeded because not only have, have we got a, a small element out of prison, but our children, you know, all of us have children and all of our children are doing good. Not, ju not just to say they're doing good in American society, they're doing good in their efforts of struggling against to build, a, to build our nation, to build up our community, and to struggle against the, uh, a struggle against what's going on in the, in the society of America. And so that's why we, um, you know, we're very happy to, to express it on the show. And before we run out of time, I do want to um, let people know, if you haven't heard, that we have a, uh, one of the members of the Black Liberation Army, Brother Herman Bell, who was recently jumped on about that. Just when we left here last year, when I was here last year, um, a few weeks after that, he was jumped on by the guards in New York and beat on. But after 45 years of imprisonment, the parole board has set a date for him. When they set that date, the Policeman Benevolence Association, Association tried to file an injunction. Uh, they did file uh, with the courts to prevent, his, his, to prevent him from being released. They always, whenever our political prisoners our prisoners are, are put up for parole. There's always some throwback from the from the police benevolent association in different cities, and in New York, they, in New York they tried to actually prevent his release even after the parole board has set a date. They're usually successful in convincing the parole board not to set a date, but this time the parole board set a date, and they actually went to court to try to prevent Herman Bell. Um, but as of the latest word that we have, Herman Bell is due to be released from prison uh, two days from now, and we're keeping our fingers crossed, keeping our fists clenched, and hoping that he will be released and to welcome him home on Friday, uh, the 27th, 27th of April at 5 p.m. Uh, Brother Herman Bell, former, former Black Panther Party member and former member of the Black Liberation Army, will be released. Yeah. And that's what we hope he will be released, because Sekou Odinga, who was released three years ago, it was nine years later <laughs> you know, from the time he was supposed to be released. Mm -hmm. We have Aranza Bowers, who was supposed to be released 12 years ago, mm -hmm. and who has, still hasn't been released. You know? And so we know the date has been set, and that's a victory. But the real victory will be when he comes home. And the real victory will be how we can how we can involve him in continuing the struggle. Because when people come home, 
you know, sometimes they want to get right back in the struggle. Sometimes they just want to take a breath a minute. Mm -hmm. But uh, whatever our soldiers want to do, we as a community need to be prepared to allow them to allow them to do that. And that's what we're looking forward. You know, we you know we salute Brother Herman Bell and his efforts. We salute his family for sticking with him. We salute all those comrades who worked who worked on getting his release, who worked on keeping him, keeping him uh, with visitors and with mail. And so we, um, so I wanna give out two more addresses so that you can be in touch with more political prisoners and write to them. The same things that we did for Herman Bell uh, can be done for a lot more uh, brothers. One, one of the uh, websites that I wanna give out is the Northeast Political Prisoner Coalition dot com. That's the website. Northeast Political Prisoner Coalition dot com. And you can get in you can from that website you can go and look up names of political prisoners, their, their cases, and see what you can do, uh, what you can do to become involved in their case. And there's another website, uh, the Jericho Movement.com, J E R I C H O Movement.com, where you can, there's a broad amount of political prisoners that, Jer that fights for political prison being fought for under the banner of Jericho Movement.com. And we're asking people to please go to that, Jericho Movement.com, as well as the uh, Northeast Political Prisoners Coalition. Dot com. And also the International Friends, the International Family and Friends of Mumia Abu Jamal is still fighting and he has a particular medical condition that we want people to know about. He has cirrhosis, cirrhosis of the liver. He had had diabetes and they refused to treat him by the time they, by the time they did give him treatment, um, he had succumb to psychosis of the liver, and he is still struggling. There's a book, there's a movie out, I'll be good if the station can get a copy, I'll see what I can do to make sure that there is a copy so it can be shown on this on the station. It's called Long Distance Revolutionary, and it's about Mumia Abu Jamal. So, um, we're running out of time again, it's almost, almost time, and I'm trying to, rem trying to remember the different things so that I can make sure that I've, that I've covered everything. One thing that I do want to cover is that in Jackson, Mississippi, uh, this, coming, um, this coming August, uh, we're developing an event, a Black August event. Uh, Black August is to commemorate the struggles, particularly of political prisons, but all struggles of resistance that have taken place amongst our people over these last few centuries. And so we are, we are endeavoring to have a, a New African Family Day. And we have a New African Family Day because we're going to be talking about not particularly the prisoners themselves, but their families. And we want the families of the political prisoners and the families of other people who struggle. We are going to be, we want to unite the New African, the new modern day New African liberation struggle with the black freedom struggle of the 40s and 50s and the 60s, which, which preceded this modern day New African liberation struggle, as well as the struggle that, that continued to take place amongst the indigenous. We know here in New Orleans, we celebrate, we celebrate the, uh, our indigenous ancestors uh, all through our culture. Uh, with the Mardi Gras Indians and, uh, and other, uh, other institutions and venues which celebrate that existence and part of our heritage. And we want to celebrate this, that heritage in the New African Family Day. We want to celebrate the, uh, all of those efforts of, of struggle because it was a continuous struggle to survive uh, that, the, that our indigenous fought against um, in the, same, in the same area where we're still struggling for freedom today. They originally tried to move them, to move them out of this area, and you would, get, you would be fined if you, would, if, you was, if you was to say that you was an Indian and you were still leaving, living in this area after the federal government said you had to leave. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of people 
a lot of people didn't say they was Indians. They they didn't claim to be Choctaw for years. People wouldn't claim people wouldn't claim to be Creek or Washita. People would just they people would just say, well, I'm a Negro, or I'm a colored guy, or whatever. You know, just because to say who you are meant five years imprisonment or eight years imprisonment or something like that. So we want to celebrate the struggle that people have that people have survived. People have defied the uh, defied the orders of this corrupt existence, this corrupt regime, and telling us what we could do and what we couldn't do, where we could live and where we couldn't live. And they're still trying to do it. Now gentrification is the most popular thing. But it started off with just ordering our people to get up off of that property where you're at and go, go someplace west. And this modern day gentrification is a continuation of that same, uh, what they call the Indian Removal Act. So this modern day, uh, this modern day Indian Removal Act or African Removal Act um, it's a press people's removal act not to allow us to have any form of and develop any form of wealth in for over three or four generations you know that's an army policy just like the indian indian removal act was under the war department you know when we look at it's not just real estate you know it's not just real estate and local politicians this is the act of war and we have to realize that war is being made against us gentrification is an act of war just as removing, removing the Cherokee out of the territory and moving them west was an act of war. And just as the, the move on Oklahoma in, ni in, 19, in the early 1920s, you know, the bombing of Oklahoma, the bombing of Tulsa was a continuation of that. Um, and so was a continuation of the Indian Removal Act. So this, what they call this mass incarceration and gentrification is a continuation of that. So we want to celebrate the fact that we have survived that and we're continuing to survive that. And we, are want, we want to continue to celebrate it until, until victory. And that's what we're lo looking for. So that, that date for New African Family Day, uh, New African Family Day will be ho hosted in Jackson, Mississippi, uh, where our where the son of our, our comrade Lumumba Shakur, I mean, excuse me, uh, Chokwe Lumumba, comrade Lumumba Shakur had be, Lum, Chokwe Lumumba had become the mayor of Jackson, Mississippi, and now his son, Antar Lumumba, Antar Chokwe Lumumba, is, is presently the mayor. And so we, uh, we want to do this at this time when we know we have a, a, progressive, a progressive administration in that city. And, and many other cities are waking up because they see what happened in Jackson, Mississippi. And many other cities are, are, are looking toward Jackson and looking toward uh, copying that model and developing people's assembly and, and developing a platform where people, where we, we're not trying to claim an easy victory and mm -hmm. saying that when we when we put a person in in Congress or we put a person in in a mayor's seat that that's our liberation but that's a step toward our liberation and when we can put them there on a particular platform of self-determination where we know they're serving our interests they're not just there to make a few coins for themselves or for their personal family but they're there to serve the interests and they are and to serve the interests on a on a broad platform the uh, Last thing I want to mention, not the last thing I have to mention, but the last thing I got time to mention is that on the uh, 19th, the weekend of the 19th at, in, at uh, Central State uh, in North Carolina, there'll be a liberation assembly, a black liberation assembly, national liberation assembly, where people will be coming to, uh, together, together to discuss um, that and I think uh, a website I can direct you to is manifesto uh, manifesto m i n i f e s t o dot com um, and you can go to that website just Google that and find out about the the, the national national liberation assembly that will be taking place 
um, okay. and, 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 and just in just less than a month from now. Durham, North Durham, Carolina now. at North Carolina right. Central, yeah. Right. Well, do you have anything to close out, any information, contact information? I know you said for our audience to look for you at the Jazz Fest this weekend at yeah. Booth U2, is right. it? Right, at Booth U2. That's the booth I'll be at. Okay. And, and also I'll be at Community Book Center. Um, I'll be at Community Book Center mm -hmm. with this book. Mm -hmm. Look for me in the whirlwind, mm -hmm. uh, which again has a forward in it by Imam Jamil Alameen, mm -hmm. uh, formerly known as H. Rap Brown. Good title, Marcus Garvey. Huh? Look yeah. for me in the whirlwind. Yeah. That's a, that's a <laughs> well, once again, it was great having you here, brother. Okay, I'm thank you. I'm glad to I was able to make it. And thank you for opening up, opening up the doors and opening up the airways for me. I want to say peace to everyone. And again, uh, from Imam Jamil and from many other political prisoners, we want to say thank you. You know, thank you to New Orleans for being New Orleans. And, and that, that movie says they got some bad brothers in New Orleans. They got <laughs> some right. bad brothers. Who can by the door? Come on, listen, let every voice to free. Yeah. yeah.